There's one goal that I've had for quite a while now in my digital art journey, and that's learning how to draw without lines. Uh, that didn't sound right. Painting. I'm talking about digital painting. I have been absolutely amazed by the people who are able to have such a painterly style, and it's time for me to face my art responsibilities, as Sam Desarts would say, and learn how to do it myself. And with that, I went back down the YouTube rabbit hole. I watched pretty much any kind of speed paint or tutorial that I could find with the kind of style that I wanted. It it basically was just Sam Desart's videos, I'm not gonna lie. And then I just binged them until eventually I realized, hey, um, maybe if I picked up the pencil, brush, stylus, uh, whatever. If I tried to actually paint something, it might help a little bit. So that's what I did. I figured that it'd be best to start off with something easy. A ball, the classic, but being the channel that I am, I decided I'd start with a cute little Pokeball. And that made me realize that I have a lot of work in front of me before I get to the art goals that I truly want for myself. It definitely is pretty good for just starting, but it could use some work. And that's when I decided that maybe practicing digital painting with some references, God's greatest gift wouldn't be the worst idea. So I found a bunch of references on Pinterest and I decided that I was gonna to try to mimic these pieces as close as I could. And one of the examples of this is this Charizard piece that I found from a Medicart. Now, if you don't know who a Medicart is, and I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, they are a Tokyo-based illustrator that does a lot of pieces for several different games, but how I know them is through the Pokemon franchise. Mainly this Babero card, which I would consider the modern day Mona Lisa. So I continued to do style studies like this to make sure that I could best understand how to do digital painting and how to do digital painting in a style that I want to have for myself in the future. And with that knowledge, I decided it was time to give myself another try at that Pokeball and just see how much I've learned. Now I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I did spend a much longer time on this piece just because I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything correct and also I had a lot more knowledge about what I should be doing and that takes a little bit longer than what I did the previous time. In addition to that I added this Pokemon here, it's a cutie fly, it's a really small Pokemon so I figured it'd be really cute that I was hugging the ball and I made the ball a nest ball thinking that it was a net ball and you know what it just works with the color palette so we're going with it. And Overall, I think this piece turned out a lot better than the other one, mainly just because I spent a lot more time cleaning it up. I spent a lot more time making sure that I had things like lighting and shading and all that correct. And it's something that I'm very, very proud of just to see how far that I've gone with all of these little edits and things and going from my original Pokeball to something that I truly looked at and was just like, wow, I did not know that I could draw anything like that. That being said, there is still room to grow and it honestly felt good to be able to point out, okay, this is what I can work on and this is what I can continue to do to learn. Mainly in this piece, it's the environment. I didn't really make any background for this piece. I did attempt, but since I had already made the original thing it was kind of difficult to do so for the next piece that I wanted to work on I wanted to do some more style studies about environments and then bring that in so after posting this image on my patreon where everyone could see my stuff early for three dollars I went back to the Pinterest board and all through social media to get some better examples of the kinds of environments that I wanted and just build up that mental library of art that I want to use for a later date and then after all of that I got started on my third and final piece so I started this piece with a thumbnail just so I'd have a basic idea of what I wanted to do and then I began working on the actual environmental layout. So I started by blocking out this wall here and then I added the forest in the background which honestly I think I did really well. I just kind of blocked out the colors and stuff and then used a blur effect so that the wall and the Pokemon would really pop out in the foreground. And then after that, I began working on this wall. And this wall gave me so much trouble. I don't know what was going on with me, but it was such a pain to try to figure out the kind of texturing and stuff that I wanted to make sure that this looked like a genuine wall that the Pokemon would be sitting on. And thankfully, I actually found this image from Sam Does Arts that really gave me a little bit of guidance as to what kind of texturing this wall would have and what kind of feel it would have in order to make it look more realistic while still stylized. And after I got all that down, I finally began working on the Pokemon here, which in this case was going to be a Fletchling. Now, this Fletchling is honestly so cute, and on top of that, it works incredibly well with this piece because it's the orange contrasting all the blues and greens in this piece, and just makes it look a lot more pronounced. You know, like complementary colors, all that stuff. So after that, I did struggle a little bit with figuring out how to block in the character, which is something that I'm gonna have to continue to work on just 
just because I want to make sure that everything is laid out so when I go back to do shading it doesn't become a nightmare of things overlapping when they're not supposed to. But once I did all of that and got the blocking down, I was able to do all this lovely shading and I was pretty much done with this piece. And this piece took me about the same amount of time, maybe a little more, I think it was like two and a half hours versus two hours, but I honestly think it turned out so much better than the second piece and definitely leaps and bounds above the first piece that I had started with only five days ago. And yeah, that's how I went from my old style to learning how to digitally paint in just five days. Thank you so much to everyone for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And a huge shout out to my patrons who are getting me one step closer to being able to do this full time and deliver even more content to you guys. I really can't express how much it means to me that y'all are willing to do that for me. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Bye guys.